one of the great Irish reels, really great driving session tune. I'm going to do this video a little bit backwards. I'm going to start with the fun version and then I'm going to break it down. So don't get freaked out if this is very complex. Everything that I do is completely achievable. It just needs to break it into its little components. Uh, and most ornamentation is just one note played three times anyway. So this is Dinky's Reel. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this version. And as I said, we'll work backwards and we'll get down to the very bare bones uh, foundational tune. You can always zoom ahead to that section of the video if you wish. actually it's it's fast but everything in its uh, you know broken down components are pretty straightforward let's do the tune actually I'm gonna pick out a couple of the cool chord stuffs chord stuffs chord stuff at the end there's a little bit of work involved in banging these out because there's there's finger jumps and chordal jumps and triplets within the kind of chordal sequences this one is the one I like <laughs> is made up of the high A and the C sharp and the C sharp is on the A string and then you need to jump off in order to free up the A string for the triplet. You create this uh, staccato kind of almost like a vamp that happens uh, within the chord. So the little bit of work involved in that is actually getting up to the high A after it. Because you've just played a G and a B flat. slide or you can always pinky it if you have a nice stretchy pinky so that's some of the more kind of creative uh, fun stuff that's in that that second part and there's a good bit of work in like I, I'm really switching hand position a lot in this tune now one of the reasons for that is that my stretch from my pinky 
between my ring finger and my pinky is just not good. It just doesn't, it doesn't like to do it. And if yours does, I'm jealous. Uh, I can stretch fine from my, uh, from my middle to my pinky. So what I do is, I, I'm all about flexibility. So it's like whatever gets the notes played in the most comfortable fashion, that's what works for me. So I will slide right up to fifth position. And I have no problem using the pinky on the high A because it's coming off my middle finger. Now this is just for me, for my fingers. version of dinkies with a lot of stuff going on and digging into some of those more uh, fun chordal ideas in the end and this of course is all fully notated on uh, my patreon that's endoscala banjo link is uh, in the description and in the pinned comment so go check it out lots of fun stuff there all right let's roll it back a little bit i'm just going to play the tune a little more simply with ornamentation but not as kind of crazy as previously and i'm going to slow it down a little bit as well like i said we're doing this this one a little bit backwards <laughs> just slower and probably as complex as the last one but it does show the range of different ornaments that you can do within the one tune and the, the many different ways that you can interpret what is a reasonably simplistic second part and where you put the emphasis now there's a good bit of variation of the melody itself there but this is definitely a tune that lends itself to lots of uh, cool variations so when you have that rolling uh, open A triplet that's happening right the way through that, you can really go to town on what the, on what the, uh, the top notes do. Thank you. 
did throw in that nice descending sequence into that just at a slower pace so that you can see where that fits in nicely into the tune. I promised a very simple playthrough version just so you can learn the tune and then you can work backwards from the start of this video and uh, get all the cool stuff in as well. So here's Dinkies, uh, nice and easy, nice and simple, just the notes. opportunities to keep your fingers on the strings and create those little subtle blends of notes so there's a quite a, a good while where you can keep the D note the fret 5 on with your ring finger you do need to bridge it well so that the E string is available all right so all the way through that first sequence until you need it to go for the B. So you just, it creates that little zone of resonance in that as opposed to the kind of picky uh, staccato -y sound that we're trying to avoid. And the same goes for the G and the B when you get to this section. Now so that I can keep the two on, I use my pinky for the high A. That's just a nice stretch. I can do it with a ring as well. The pinky just feels more comfortable. And the, the ring, this D is on all the way through this la latter part as well. So always look in tunes, no matter what the, what the tune is, for opportunities to leave your fingers on the strings for as long as possible to create those little blends of sound that uh, just make the whole thing a lot nicer to listen to. I do hope you like what I'm doing here. I'm trying to make the banjo a more fun experience for everybody, listeners and players alike. I'm taking tunes, breaking them down, building them back up again, adding in all of the fun stuff. And it doesn't really matter what level you're at, there will be something here for you. So even if you're playing a tune at a very slow pace, Taking one of the cool ornamentations or the variations and adding it in can make it just so much more fun for you. Head over to my Patreon, it's Enda Scahal Banjo. Even if you just simply want to support what I'm doing here, creating all of these banjo lessons, I really appreciate it. It's a huge community. It's growing all of the time. It's very, very energetic. There's some brilliant people on there. Really great conversations happening on Discord all of the time. Uh, it's a very vibrant community, very friendly, very welcoming. So I do hope that you'll head over and check it out. The link is in the description and of course it's in the pinned comment as well. And thank you for watching.